This video is brought to you by New West Press. More about them later in the video. Did you grow up reading the classics? I'd like to know. I didn't really. In fact, I remember the first time I read a 600, almost 600 page novel for the first time, how that was an experience that I will never forget. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I didn't love reading. I was a voracious reader growing up. We lived right across the street from a library and I read everything I could get my hands on that was interesting to me, such as Highlights Magazine, Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps, books like How to Eat Fried Worms. Does anybody remember that sort of genre of books? That's what I was reading. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that classics are better than those books or better than modern books. They just serve a different purpose. Both are good. Those fun books that allowed me to escape to different places and um, enjoy reading helped me to love reading. Those books had its own purpose. However, the classics, they serve a purpose of teaching us things that we didn't know we needed to learn, if that makes sense. I know that's how I felt reading my first one. Lessons that you didn't know you needed to learn. Again, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I think you should have both in a good, healthy literary diet. So in this video, I'm going to share with you three reasons why you should strongly encourage or require your kids to read the classics and maybe even convince you to do it as well. So let's get started. Hi there, my name is Karen, and if you're new here, welcome. I like to help families like yourselves achieve sustainable and enjoyable homeschooling, or think of it as home education, because no matter what you're doing, encouraging your kids to read classics at home is, has so many benefits, no matter what methodology you're choosing for their education. Now, I do think it's very helpful if you do have some sort of homeschool program that incorporates this already in, such as the Robinson curriculum, or I know other ones also uh, focus on living books and uh, reading the classics. I think that's great. Just keep in mind that I think when you're homeschooling, you can sort of get into this gray area where you're not separating formal academic time and just downtime, family time, normal reading time. Uh, it's not so black and white. For example, if a child is struggling with reading uh, something in a book and they say, mom, can you tell me what this word is? There's a time where you have your instructional phonics time and there's a time where you just tell them what the word is. So instead of maybe the tendency could be, oh, you know how to say that word. You know how to sound it out. What does that blend say? Um, you know what, what this says, <laughs> et cetera, right? Instead of doing that, there's a time and a place where you just tell them what the word says and then maybe make a mental note of it too. Okay, next time we do a phonics lesson, I know I need to go over that blend again. So my point is that you balance the two, that they have their downtime where they're reading all the fun books and to have that formal academic time where they're reading books, not just on their fluency and, and fun level, but stepping it up a notch into the instructional reading level. We never want them to get to the frustration reading level where everything's going in one ear and out the other, but there is that middle sweet spot from too easy and too hard, which I think the classics fit nicely, that instructional reading level. So let's go over three reasons, especially why this is so beneficial. Number one is the improved ability to analyze text. One of the great things about classics is that they've already been read by the masses and you'll find there's no shortage of reviews or literary criticism, YouTube videos. Sometimes they've been adopted into movies, whatever it may be. And so maybe uh, as you read it, you know, you're picking up on the metaphors that stick out to you or the characters or the places, but then you're able to also look out and see how others experienced the book, what their thoughts were. And you can start to see, oh, I totally missed that. I didn't see that. Or yes, they see it the way I do it as well. And let me know if you've ever experienced this where you read a book at one point in your life and then maybe you read it again years later and different things stick out to you. That's because our brain has something known as a reticular activating system. And while there's billions, right? At least 
uh, 2.3 million bits of information surrounding us at any given second, our brain can only pick up about seven things at once, or um, I believe it's 23 bits for, per second, something like that. So whenever you're reading it, whatever's happening around your world at that time, certain things are going to stick out to you, but at different points, different things could stick out to you. And everyone reading a book is also having their own 23 bits per second jumping out at them and picking up different things. So it's just a great way to compare your experience, your understanding of the text with others. And again, because they're classics, they've already been read by the masses. So it gives you this great pool uh, opportunity uh, to compare the literary text and it improves your reading comprehension as well as your critical thinking skills. And that's something that develops as you get older and this is a great tool in order to really give it a boost. So that's reason number one. Now reason number two is that it improves your vocabulary. Now it's interesting because I study something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and there's a spelling strategy, how to help kids improve their spelling. I've noticed that it's true that a lot of times kids who are very auditory or kinesthetic rely on their feelings or how things sound to spell, and that doesn't always work with our English language. So instead, you train them, teach them to recall a visual image of it in the portion where we recall images, the visual recall. Now, one of the presuppositions, one of the tenets of that method is that you have to read a lot. You have to commit to reading because every word that you read is stored in your brain. Whether you remember it, remember how to spell it or not is a different issue, but the word is stored in your brain. It's just a matter of helping you to recall that word, see the spelling, to be able to spell it forwards and backwards. I've seen this done. It's really fascinating. So the more you read, the more you're storing in your brain, the more you're seeing all this, um, all these words. And the classics have that added benefit that the vocabulary is larger. You're going to hear words, read words that maybe you don't really hear in the day to day in your home and in the context of the world we live in because the English language can be kind of fluid and it changes from era to era. So you have that added benefit of learning new words and that's great and everything, but also think of it as a tool in your toolbox. The Robinson curriculum, for example, has a huge vocabulary program and majority of those words come from the actual books themselves. And they try to convey to parents, don't skip this. This is really important because a, a, a larger vocabulary helps kids get better jobs. I mean, it helps them in so many areas in life, but even just that, to express themselves, to have more word choices to be able to use and pull from to express themselves either speaking or in writing. So again, the classics have that added benefit of great vocabulary. Now, number three is that it could also be a glimmer, a window into the past. Kids and young adults, even adults can read these books and have a better understanding of what people were going through during different eras and how people thought. A lot of the controversy that we have today with books like uh, Tom Sawyer or the Little House on the Prairie series is because we expect people from the past to think the way we think today. You can't do anything about that. You can't change the past, but we can learn from it. And it can also help uh, kids to appreciate the world that they live in today. How, how is it better? where we're at today. It gives them a hope for the future as well. So if your kids read books that have this language that you're not comfortable with, vocabulary terms or different schools of thoughts, use it as a conversation point instead of just shying away from it completely. Use it as a conversation point to talk about how things are different today and what was going on that context in that time period when it was written. Now, before we move on to the part of the video where I recommend to you titles in each age group, I do wanna give you a little heads up when you're building your library when it comes to the classics. First of all, a lot of times it's hard to find these titles in the library today, sadly. Keep in mind that a lot of the books are now in the public domain. Now, sometimes uh, people have publishing rights. Of course, books like Little House on the Prairie, they're still being printed today. But also a lot of times these older books and classics and works in the public domain, they're a free for all. And I have found that it can go either one or two ways. Either you purchase an original, like a good quality 
original or first or second publishing. But by this point in 2022, uh, it's been around the block. It might not be in the best condition. I know there's always concerns with maybe mold, different things. You don't know how they stored the books, etc. As well as the other issue is the reprint issue. I have purchased several, many, many, wasted a lot of money on Amazon buying reprints of books I could not find anywhere else. The problem is you can't really see or get a preview on Amazon, for example. And so you get the book and sometimes the issues are the print is tiny, tiny. The images are super grainy. I mean, they might as well not have them. And sometimes it's very obvious that they just took the pages from the public domain and they put them together in a book and that's it. And they put it for sale on Amazon, sadly. And, and you don't know what you're getting. So the reprint world could be uh, a little bit of a jungle, right? Which brings me to today's sponsor, New West Press, which I absolutely love. And you've seen me talk about many times on this channel. You've seen my bookshelves that have all of these white spine books. They're very aesthetically pleasing. And I'm going to share a little bit more about why I'm such a fan of them and ways that you could really take advantage of this service because it's there. They do a fantastic job. Now, right off the bat, one really cool thing, when you log on to their website and search through the classics, they already have these built in filters where you can search Robinson curriculum and you'll see all the RC books pop up. So convenient. And there's other filters as well. So it's very affordable because there's different price points depending on what you choose. You could uh, pick something like a paperback option if that's available. And by the way, isn't this so pretty? This is the Song of Hiawatha, uh, a very epic classic poem. So there's the Song of Hiawatha. So you could do something like paperback or hardback. There's also sometimes other options, I believe linen cover as well. So almost every book really, you have price point choices, which I think is really nice. Now the actual books themselves, these are clearly not just your average reprints with the scanned photocopies. The illustrations are always very beautiful. It just, you could tell, I don't know their exact process, but it seems like they format it completely, which I can only imagine is very time consuming. So that's what they look like. The font size is perfect. Like I said, the illustrations are really great. Even these cute little Arthur Scott Bailey books, The Tale of Patty Muskrat, here's a paperback. Great for little kids nice little size here now a few other things i think you should know especially if you're the type of person where you're really conscious of where your money goes the the spending power of it is that this is a homeschool family as well so this is a family-owned business a homeschooling family at that and they print all their books here in the united states they're in nevada they print all their books here in the u.s on small printers so it really is a labor of love they are now also starting to make their books some of their books available on amazon and you can see that option on their website now something that i think is truly unique that I don't know of any other company, publishing company, is that they take requests. So for example, there's this book that I love, Ella Frances Lynch, Educating the Child at Home. I talk about this book all the time, but this is an example of a book that clearly you could tell is just like the scanned pages. It's not, you could tell it's a reprint as well because this is the standard generic Amazon KDP cover generator. Uh, so I let them know, I was like, hey, would you consider making this into one of your reprints? Because I know they do such high quality work and they did. So you can purchase this on their website. This is Ella's book, Educating the Child at Home. And you could just see the difference. Yeah, don't mind all my notes in there, <laughs> I ruined it. So that's something really neat. If you have a classic that you love and you can't find a decent reprint of it, I would message them and, and uh, request it. You never know, right? So they're really great at accommodating those types of requests. I will link their website down below as well as a blog post that I put together with several of their books, their classics in these different categories to make it really easy for you. So let's do that. Let's move on to some recommendations. So for preschoolers, I would recommend The Story of Ferdinand, all of the Beatrix Potter stories, and one that you can find on New West is The Velveteen Rabbit. That's one of my favorites. I love that book, and so they have a really beautiful copy on there. Now for adolescents, I would recommend Little House on the Prairie or Charlotte's Web, and some titles you can find on New West Press are The Secret Garden, 
Five Little Peppers and How They Grew, they have actually several of their titles. And Little Lord Falteroy. That's one that we did as a read aloud. That, that was really fun. Now for preteens, I would recommend Little Women. This is their copy right here. They also have Little Men, as well as other titles that they have are Robinson Crusoe, Swiss Family Robinson, and also another book that you can find anywhere, a really nice copy is Pride and Prejudice. Now for teenagers and adults, I would really recommend books you can find on US Press are Tale of Two Cities and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Other recommendations are To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, Moby Dick, Frankenstein, Uncle Tom's Cabin. I mean, I have a list for you. I will leave it in the description down below. Of course, this list is just a starting jumping off point. If there are any other books that have impacted you, then I would really recommend you to encourage them to read it as well. Recently, I talked about how I was really nudging and encouraging. I had a list of books and I sort of do like an audition for my oldest daughter, like, which one do you want to read? And I highlight them kind of like my own reading rainbow. And I really laid it on thick for Alas Babylon, which is a book that I really enjoyed in high school. So she picked that one and she actually really enjoyed it. She loved it. So any book like that, that you have that made an impact on you, encourage your kids to read it as well. And again, just remember, this doesn't mean that you should discourage them from reading their fun books. There is a place for both. I'm only encouraging this video to not forget about the classics and all of the wonderful benefits that they have to offer. Because remember, while one is for fun and pleasure and enjoyment, the other one is teaching us lessons that we didn't know we needed to learn. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Again, links down below, and I will see you in the next video. Now, I think you would really like this video, but YouTube's algorithm thinks you would like this video instead. Whichever one you picked, I'll see you there. Bye.